Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I would like to extend uh, our um, uh, originary differential equations theme towards a higher order equations. Higher order in terms of derivatives which participate in the um, differential equations will be of higher order, like second order derivatives, third order derivative, etc. Well, actually, I'm not going to talk about third order or fourth order. Probably the second order is something which I would like to restrict myself. And um, the reason why it's important is that the second derivative is extremely important for um, physics, mechanics primarily. Um, and I'm just going to demonstrate what's the relationship between the physics and the second order ordinary derivatives. And this relationship is expressed in the term of acceleration. Acceleration. Now, um, when I was talking about derivatives, um, I basically uh, related the first derivative as a rate of change of, let's say, distance from some object or from, from some beginning of, uh, of the motion as the object is moving forward so the distance is increasing let's say it's increasing uh, and the rate of this increase is basically the speed at any moment so if you express your position let's say we're talking about a um, horizontal movement on a coordinate uh, x-axis and uh, this is position at moment t now the distance from some kind of a origin of coordinate is distance x of t. Then the first derivative at this particular moment is the speed. This object is moving at this particular moment because it can change. At the next moment it can be different. Now, what is the acceleration? Well, that's the second derivative. This is a uh, rate of change of the speed right so that's basically a definition so we have a first derivative from the function which represents the distance um, as a speed and the second derivative which is derivative of the first derivative right so this is x of t second derivative is acceleration okay fine so we basically have defined the acceleration as the second derivative of the function which characterizes the position of our point on the x-axis. Okay, that's fine. Now, let's go into physics, into mechanics. And I would like actually to talk about the second law uh, of Newton. So, I hope you know that uh, there are three fundamental laws um, uh, suggested by Newton uh, in very very long time ago like 17th century or something like this um, which basically put the foundation of the whole classical mechanics and the second law is the following force is related to mass and acceleration by this formula well formula is fine but let's just analyze this formula when it was introduced at some moment um, people were primarily thinking about okay let's apply a constant force uh, onto a constant mass and then it would cause certain acceleration of the movement of that mass which is constant a uh, related to uh, force and the mass in this formula and this is fine. What I would like to introduce is, let's just go a little bit further. Let's interpret this formula not as the case where constant force, constant mass, and constant acceleration are related to each other, but variable. Because the force can be a function of time, the mass can be a function of time, and acceleration can be function of time. Well, let's forget for a second about mass being uh, variable. Let's consider there is a second 
there, there is a, a constant mass. Let's say you are driving a car. Now, when we're talking about force, we're talking about the force which is actually not just one single force, but a, a balance of all the forces which are affecting our object. Now, what are two major forces? One is the force which our engine is actually um, pushing the car forward and the force which is resisting this, which is also a combination of like friction and air resistance and whatever else. Um, it's basically resisting this motion. So if you're thinking that you are moving uh, with a constant speed along a straight line, it doesn't mean that there are no forces, it just means that the force of the engine is neutralized by the force of the resistance, which is the friction and the air, uh, air resistance, etc. So the total, the balance of all forces is zero, right? Okay, so anyway, we are talking about the force as being a balance of all forces. Now, what if you press the pedal, the gas pedal on, on the engine? I'm not talking about electric cars. <laughs> Electric cars have their own equivalent of the gas pedal, right? Okay, so whenever you press the pedal, you increase the force of the engine with which it pushes the car forward, right? And car accelerates. The speed is increasing because the resisting um, uh, forces like friction and, uh, and resistance of the air probably are also increasing, but not as much. So the balance of forces is positive and there is certain force which uh, causes the acceleration and that acceleration is also changing because sometimes you can press harder and you will move you, you will increase your speed faster let's say from um, 20 uh, miles an hour to 40 miles an hour in like five seconds but if you press it differently then the same increase of the speed would be during a longer period or a shorter period of time depending on how you press so basically i would like to extend this formula towards this type now let's go to the mass is mass variable well usually mass is not variable but sometimes it is let's consider you are talking about a rocket now when the rocket is um, going up um, the fuel is burning, right? And the fuel has certain mass. Therefore, the mass of the rocket is changing, it's decreasing, and substantially, because the fuel represents a very large amount uh, of, of, of mass of, uh, of the rocket. So, all these variables can change. Okay, now, these are physical aspects. Now, what are the mathematical aspects? What is, basically, the goal of this particular equation? Most likely the goal is knowing the force, even if it's dependent on time, and knowing the mass, again, even if it's dependent on time, we have to find out the position of our object. Now, what is the position? Well, we have acceleration, right? But acceleration is a second derivative of the position. So what is this thing? It's a differential equation, uh, ordinary differential equation, because we're talking about function of one argument, and it's a differential equation of the second order because it's the second derivative. In the previous lectures, we were talking only about the first order differential derivatives, different types, how to solve them, etc. And this is our first encounter with differential equation of the second order. Well, can it be solved? Before doing that, let's just consider two very important partial cases, very particular cases. Okay, now let me just write down this equation on the top, and then I will go to particular cases. So we have function of t is equal to mass of t times a. Well, I will put, instead of a, I will put second derivative of uh, position. Okay, so where v is my first derivative and a is derivative of the speed. Okay, now let's go to a particular case and let's consider that f of t 
is equal to zero always again it's not a single force it's a balance of all forces like in case of the car moving with constant speed we are talking about the force of the engine is neutralized by the force of the resistance friction and resistance of the air so what happens in this case and let's also consider mass constant just a constant some kind of positive constant so what does it mean well it means which means second derivative of some function which is distance as a function of time is equal to zero because mass is not equal to zero right now what if the function uh, if, if the second derivative is equal to zero well the second derivative is a derivative of the first derivative which means that my first derivative is constant right remember this if the if, if the um, derivative of a function is equal to zero then the function itself is constant and the function right now is actually the first derivative okay fine so we have basically come up with this um, particular um, rule that the speed this is the speed is constant so if my function uh, if, if my force function of ft is equal to zero which means there are no external forces which are um, acting upon this object or they are all neutralize each other same thing so if all these forces neutralize each other and the result the balance is zero then my object would have a constant speed see whatever the speed is now what kind of speed is this well it depends because if the object already is moving with certain speed and at some moment while it's moving with certain speed we are saying that okay there are no more forces acting on this particular object it will continue moving with that speed whatever that speed is if it's a 20 mile an hour it will be 20 miles an hour if it's a 40 it will be 40 so basically it all depends on the speed at certain moment at, at, at which moment we actually can say that okay from this moment on there are no forces acting the most convenient way is actually um, assign the moment t is equal to zero as the moment we start actually paying attention to our uh, object so whatever the speed was at that particular moment it's retained and again going back to physics this is basically the first law of uh, Newton's so uh, the first law of Newton says that if there are no forces or the balance of all forces is equal to zero acting upon an object well it will basically continue doing what it's doing if it was at rest I mean if it was if its speed was zero it will continue to be at rest if there are no more forces if it was moving with certain constant speed it will continue moving with that constant speed so basically we can say that if we know speed at moment t is equal to zero let's say it's v zero this particular speed will be maintained now if this speed is maintained uh, how can we find out the um, the distance from uh, the beginning of the uh, uh, origin of coordinate okay I will put this is equal to v0 which is speed at moment 0 it's a constant now if my first derivative is some kind of a constant then we know that the function is what we're just integrating right integral which is v0 times t plus some kind of other constant but well, let me use different letter constant d right we have to integrate it because xt is integral of x prime t right so integrating a constant gives me this plus uh, some kind of a constant which I don't know now how can I basically find out what exactly this constant is same thing we need some kind of initial condition because 
all I have to know is where exactly my body was at moment zero. If my object was at point x zero at moment t is equal to zero, then this is exactly the constant I need. So we need two initial conditions where exactly our object was at moment zero and what was its initial speed. If I know these two things, then knowing that the function which represents my force is equal to zero, then I can actually determine position of my uh, object at any future moment of time. So it's predetermined. So if I know that there are no more forces acting upon this guy and mass is uh, again constant, I assume, then I have to know where exactly the, 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 this, this particular object was at moment uh, when I started my observation and what was its initial speed. If I know these two, then that's a uh, position on my x-axis um, where this particular object will be at any future moment of time. And again, let me just tell you again that my second law um, my Newton's second law allows using these uh, manipulations with differential equations derived with the first law because this is actually the representation of the first uh, Newton's first law that if there are no more forces then the body will continue its um, uh, movement with whatever the initial speed was uh, and whatever was uh, the, the, the beginning uh, position at, at the beginning of time and if the initial speed was zero then obviously this thing is zero and the position will not change with time so if there was if the body was at rest when v0 was equal to zero then it will remain at that particular position nothing would change if it was moving with some speed it will continue moving with the same speed and proportionally to time the distance will increase from the initial distance to whatever it is. So that's my first kind of application of the of this particular um, differential equation of the second order in case when there are no more forces. So that's when the second uh, Newton's law actually implies the first one. Okay, now let me go back to a little bit more um, common case, I would say, when the force is not zero but it's some kind of a constant so f is not zero it's some kind of a p which is constant and m is m also constant so when my force is a constant and my mass is a constant I have an equation of this type Well, mass is not equal to zero, so I derive this and this. Integrating this, I will get, obviously... By the way, if um, f is a constant and m is a constant, then this is also a constant. So I can also put it equals to a and also constant. Okay? So now, what is my... Uh, integral of the second derivative, which is the first derivative, uh, integrating this constant would be a times t plus plus. That's important. Plus, we have obviously some kind of a constant. Now, what is this particular constant? Same thing. If t is equal to zero, my speed must be something. So I can safely put here v0. Now integrating this, now I don't have derivatives anymore. And this is function of t obviously. Okay, integrating this. a is a constant. Integral of t is t squared over 2, right? Because the derivative of t squared is 2t divided by 2 would be t. And integral of v0 would be v0 times t, 
plus constant. Or D, I don't know. I already used C. D. So what is the constant? Again, we have to know the initial position. So if t is equal to 0, initial position would be exactly x0, right? So we know this constant. So now, this is an equation of the motion uh, where my force is a constant, my mass is a constant, and therefore my acceleration uh, a is a constant. So if the constant acceleration, then this is a quadratic polynomial, by the way, is an equation of the movement. So you don't really have to remember these whenever you're studying physics. You don't really have to remember all these formulas, but you do have to know how to integrate, basically. That's it. And then you will derive this formula through a very simple integration process. Okay. Now, um, in general, so we have considered two particular cases when force is equal to zero and mass is a constant. The second case when force is equal to some positive constant and uh, mass is still a constant. That's this one. Well, what is a general case? Well, general case when everything is changing, right? Well, when everything is changing, we can't really say anything about this. We can't say anything about mass. So all we can say is that if we know how the force is changing with time and mass is changing with the time, all we can say now that my second derivative is uh, force divided by mass. My first derivative is equal to as a function of t of course. Uh, integral of f of t m of t dt and well obviously there is a constant embedded here right whenever I will take this integral I will have to put plus some kind of a constant and my um, position at time t is another integral integral of integral of f of t divided by m of t dt and dt again. So we integrate twice. First we integrate, we get some kind of a function, plus constant by the way, and then the second integration gives us another function with another constant. Ba well, basically that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I, I just wanted you to understand that differential equations are not something which mathematicians just thought about and basically invented from a thin air. It's really going back to Newton who was trying to express um, the laws of movement and his um, uh, laws were actually the reflection of differential equations. And he is one of the people who basically invented all these differentials, uh, uh, derivatives, integrals, etc. Um, uh, he, he basically one of those, he and Leibniz um, uh, were the pioneers in this particular era. And that again is going back to like 17th century uh, or 18, don't remember. Anyway, so um, these uh, are the simplest uh, differential equations, obviously. You see, it's just straight integration of this. It's not a more general. More general would be like function, some kind of a function where the first derivative, the second derivative, the function itself, all are together, and that requires certain approach how to solve it. But these guys are solved very easily, and there is no problem um, approaching these particular solutions. And um, in the future, uh, in, in my lectures uh, in, in physics, I will definitely use all these differential equations and derivatives and integrals um, to basically go to the roots of all these physical formulas, which uh, you might be presented without any kind of a proof. But 
there is a very simple mathematical proof, like the, the proof of the, um, when, whenever you have a constant acceleration, for instance, you have this uh, quadratic polynomial, uh, which expressed the position of the body. All right, so that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>